Welcome back to Omaha. We have mentioned the star power that is in this LSU dugout. You have the best pitcher in the country in Paul Skeens and one of the best position players in the country in Dylan Cruz. But what if I told you these two teammates once faced each other in 2021 and what ended up being a milestone moment for Cruz? Do you remember first time you faced Dylan Cruz? Yes, very well. I buckled him on a slider. Dylan Cruz trying to make something happen when he gets to the plate. Should have thrown it again. I'm thinking he's going to throw me a fastball right here. This ball is tattooed deep, deep, deep. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. My first career home run. He was now my teammate. They didn't have a scouting report on me other than he throws really hard, so he probably knew I was going to come with a fastball, and he can hit a fastball. When LSU posted this on Twitter, it got a reply from a guy you may have heard of, Alex Bregman, who played for LSU from 2012 to 2015. And he tweeted, one one in three years. What does that mean? First round, first pick. Bregs maybe knows what he's talking about a bit, guys. Yeah, uh, two good candidates for that, including Paul Skeens, Golden Spikes Award finalist with 188 strikeouts. I don't know where you start really uh, and I'm not quite sure where you end with Skeens that's just kind of what you see you, you're going to watch a big leaguer tonight I mean a guy that honestly you could fly to Yankee Stadium tonight in this case Boston and he could start Sunday night baseball tomorrow he's as dominant for me as anybody we've ever seen at the collegiate level how about 188 strikeouts and 18 walks and you're going to see a fastball that can get up to 102 tonight Whew. Tennessee is seeing him for the second time this season. We check out the Capital One batting order for the Volunteers. And this group, big time home run hitting potential. And Christian Moore, man, he was good in the regional. He was. It's a lineup that really leans on the home run to produce their offense. Christian Moore did that, especially in that Clemson regional. He was the MVP of that regional. Four home runs this postseason. They need him to run into one tonight. How much do you think that is a strategy that, that Tennessee is going to carry with them in terms of trying to take some big hacks against Skeens, knowing that he's going to get some strikes? I don't know if big hacks is the word, but you have to take your A-plus hack because mm -hmm. it's just hard to string hits together, and he doesn't walk people. So a Tennessee offense that's built on hitting the long ball, they're going to have to go up there and not be afraid to punch out some and make sure that over the course of the game they get their best swing off consistently. Oh, here we go. Paul Skeens at LSU against Tennessee. His team squared off at the end of March, beginning of April at Alex Box Stadium. Third SEC weekend, it was one versus 10 in the country at the time. Tigers took two out of three, the opener and then game two as well. And then Maui Ahuda and Tennessee salvaged game three of that series. Get in price right now to get a ticket. According to Vivid Seats, 154 bucks just to get in the door. Yeah. Well, those empty seats you see, they're not going to be empty very long. They clear the ballpark after the first game today. They're all coming back in, and it will be full really quick. Get ready on the radar guns. First pitch from Paul Skeens is cut out and missed at an even hundred, and off we go to Maui Ahuna. At least it's straight. Yeah. I mean, that makes it easy. That only <laughs> moved about 18 inches across the plate and straight down. Skeens' first pitch in the Super Regional was 101.92. Oh, that's outside. So he's a little bit south of that to start. What a season it's been. The 188 strikeouts against just 18 walks for the Air Force transfer. Paul Skeens. That's up and away, working to the arm side against the Tennessee shortstop. Hawaii native, top 70 on our MLB draft rankings, according to Kylie McDaniel, and a preseason All-American for the Kansas transfer. Cuts through the heater, two and two. Punched him out three times the first time they faced each other back in March. And Ahuna struggles with Velo. Is, you can see already to start this A-B, tardy on a couple hundred mile an hour heaters. Two, two. So Skeen sticks with it and thought he got strike three at 101. Maybe just a little bit up. Angel Campos behind home plate tonight. Hayden Trevinsky thought it was there. He walked on the throw down to third base. So payoff pitch. 
All fastballs so far. And that's the one Ahuna can handle. It's a low to high bat path. He needs the ball below his thighs against the velocity of Skeens to have success. Had a chance right there. Hunter Ensley, center fielder, is on deck. Pitch number seven to Ahuna. And he strikes out on 102. <laughs> Buckle up, kiddos. This one might be kind of fun. You got a Tennessee who is not going to be intimidated by it. Now, they, they may get beat, but they're not going to walk into this with the mystique that I think some would when they're facing schemes. That's seven straight fastballs, seven a hundred or greater. Last one just flipped in there at 102. Now Hunter Ensley, the redshirt sophomore center fielder, looks at the first breaking ball from Paul Skeens, a slider that has been a big part of his story in this sensational season. Ensley has taken over this year in center for Drew Gilbert. It was a first-round pick. That's a slider for a strike. Best pitch in the world. The backup breaking ball. Backup breaking ball. It's the best pitch in the world. The reaction's <laughs> always the same. Here comes the 1-1 to Ensley. The fastball on the ground is short. Diving stab, Jordan Thompson, and not going to get Hunter Ensley. One out, infield single, and Tennessee's got a base runner against Paul Skeens. Hensley, one of the guys on this team that does handle Velo, a really short, efficient move to the ball, able to get the barrel there. I think Thompson had a chance if he got the grip the first time, but was unable to make that transfer, and the Vols have an early base run. So it brings up their left fielder in the three spot, Jared Dickey. Redshirt sophomore who was second team SEC for the Vols. Wait. Tony Vitello told us this morning our best overall hitter. And with health comes performance oh, one. for Jared Dickey who looks at 101 for ball one. Jared redshirted as a true freshman a couple of years ago when Tennessee was here in Omaha. And he told us this week he was watching from Charlotte, North Carolina playing summer ball. He said it was not fun. Watching on TV. Skeens yanks that one 2 0 on Dickey. Dickey, one of the hitters that had some success last time, and also Tennessee's best hitter against Velo. So if you're looking for a combo in this lineup to do some damage, it's Ensley Dickey, and with a 2 0 count, couldn't ask for much more than this opportunity right here. Skeens delivers. Line of oh. third right at Tommy White. 101 coming in. What do you got? About 112 going yeah. out? At least. I mean, that, that, you want to talk about not, not enough time to think. It is, you better hope you're in the right spot. It sticks right in that glove. There's only 104 off the bat. Only 104. 101 coming in, 104 going out. Well, and what's interesting, the most left handed hitters would not see a third baseman played there, right? But because of the velocity of skeins, you got the third baseman in much more of a traditional spot. Usually in the modern day, we see a shift there, and that ball's into left field. Because you're expecting really late swings. That's right. Christian Moore now oh, with two outs, outside. and Hunter Ensley still at first. Or the sophomore second baseman from Brooklyn in the cleanup spot. Berkey told you what he did in the regional in Clemson, South Carolina. Four home runs, and the MVP of that regional. Yeah. Breaking ball for a strike. Check on Ensley. A couple barrels early for the Vols. Has to give that dugout some confidence. Again, they have seen Skeens before, and obviously you, you get weathered by that Southeastern Conference gauntlet. You see Velo. Now, Skeens is a totally different animal. But I think maybe, maybe as much as any team in this field, somewhat of a comfort level against a pitcher like Skeens? Yeah, I mean, I think that well, they've seen plenty of velo in the fall. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, when you're rolling out there at fall ball, Tennessee's going 98, 98, 98. So I would agree. Slider away, three and one on Christian Moore. So we talk about opportunities against schemes. You don't get a ton of them. Here is one. You're getting a fastball right here. That's what Tony Vitello said to us today. When you get those opportunities, you cannot miss them. Moore takes a strike at 101 on the black. 
Tony Vitello said to us, it's like Brett Favre. He's going to give you three or four interception opportunities. you got to be ready and capitalize. Better not drop it. Two outs in the top of the first. Three, two to more. Foul the way. That one much more hittable than the previous one, right? The other one knocked the black off the edge of the paint. That one was middle, middle. Moore loves to use the backside of the field. His natural contact point is a little deeper. Because of that, he can struggle against velocity. See if he gets another fastball from Paul Skeens. On his 20th pitch of this first. Strike three calls. 101 at the knees. Two more Ks for Paul Skeens. He's got 190 of them. By the time you get in, there could be more. Back in Omaha, let's get you the Capital One batting order for LSU as they come up for the first time against Tennessee. We told you about Dylan Cruz. He's at the top, and like Paul Skeens, Tommy White, a transfer added to LSU this season. 97 ribbies, and obviously he had the good fortune of hitting behind Dylan Cruz all year long. But what an addition. He has been set the all-time freshman home run record last year at NC State, transfers to LSU, and follows it up with another monster season. They face Andrew Lindsay, senior right-hander. And Berkey, you asked Tony Vitello today, if you had told him a year ago, Andrew Lindsay would be starting your first game in Omaha, what would he have thought? And he said, I wouldn't have even known who he was. <laughs> and he didn't. I mean, a year ago, Andrew Lindsay was coaching 13-year-olds on the East Coast when this tournament was going on. Wasn't sure if he was going to play again. That has changed and has really fit the role well. When this Tennessee team played at LSU, he was not even in the starting rotation, was still coming out of the bullpen, entered shortly thereafter, has really fit in this game one role of a weekend for Tennessee the back half of the season, a big reason why they've ended up where they are. And part of the second best pitching staff in the country in terms of ERA, only behind Wake Forest, who we saw earlier today get that win and come back fashion against Stanford. Bottom of the first, Lindsay is ready to go against Dylan Cruz. Golden Spikes Award finalist takes down with one of those turbo sinkers we're going to see from Lindsay. He'll show you that, and it'll be good velo, too. I mean, he's into the mid-90s, but when it's when it's right, it's got a whole lot of down and moving in towards that right hand. Oh, that's outside. outside. to Cruz, who is second in the country at OBP at 576. Saw the 434 average, the SEC Player of the Year, only the second two-time winner, joining Florida's Matt Laporta. 3-0 on Cruz. The kind of stage that forces the cameras out with these two teams. SEC foes here in Omaha. That's a strike on the edge. You're not going to see Dylan Cruz chase much. About half as much as a normal Division I player, just 13%. Will he go off the edges of the plate? Knows the strike zone as well as anybody in the college game. Grounds this one to short, and Maui Ahuna slipped defensively for the first down for Lindsay. Tennessee sticking with their pitching plan. They've had it this way for a little while now with Lindsey going in the first games. Of course, they got Chase Dolander, probably going to be a top 10 pick as well, and they keep him slotted in that number two role. And Drew Beam may have been better than all of them. Last weekend against Southern Miss, he slotted into that three role, and a closer in Chase Burns, it'll come in throwing 100 himself. He hit 102 in the Super Regional, so strap in folks on both sides if you haven't watched these teams. The star power is silly. All 97 RBIs of them for Tommy White in the box. All 2-0 on him. Twenty-two home runs for Tommy White after transferring in from NC State, where Tommy Tanks was born. Lindsay delivers. And White fouls it back on 94. You know, it's interesting. This is a usually a flat ball pitcher's ballpark, but the wind is blowing out strong tonight. And against the number two home run hitting team in the country, I think it's such an advantage for Tennessee to have a sinker baller on the mound tonight, right? Because this is an offense that can take you deep one through nine. 2-1. Cutting a miss. It's a little cutter he throws. And so the velocity's down a little bit. It'll be down three or four ticks, and even... 
even if it doesn't cut. Staying straight is such a different look than that normal two seam fastball. It feels like to a hitter it is cut. So. Lindsay's 2 2. And on the hands of White with his two strike approach. Yeah, he's going to get wide. It's, this is a unique move that he does. He not only he not only spreads out, but he actually puts his his lead foot in an open position that mimics the way he lands when he strides. You can see that left foot. Look how the toe is almost pointing back at Lindsay. And he's going to try to minimize all movement. You asked him about it the other day, and he told us that his head stays more stationary, and he feels like he gets better visuals on where the ball's going. Yeah, it, it also puts him in a mindset of just fighting, right? I'm just trying to stay alive and use the backside of the field. Strikes out on a nasty 96 mile an hour sinker. First game for Lindsay and there's two gone. That, that's the bowling ball one right there. <laughs> that's and it's he's not just flipping it in there tonight. He was 92 93 yeah. early. The last three sinkers that Lindsay has thrown have all been 96. And I don't care how wide you get or what you're trying to do. There ain't a whole lot of guys that are going to put that one in play. So White retired and now Trey Morgan. Takes a sinker yeah. at 94 for strike one. Okay, so Coach back it up. Ball last year. Yeah, okay. coaching travel. Well, this cat was. <laughs> How'd you like to be taking BP last summer off of this? <laughs> yeah, just kind of working on 96 with a little sink. Stand on in there. <laughs> His team oh. was so happy when he went back to play. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, they had hit a barrel all summer. <laughs> <laughs> the Tennessee River Baseball Raptors. Andrew Lindsay uh, is coaching them. He's a 23 year old in his first year with the Vols. He'd been at Charlotte. Took off last year for personal reasons. Morgan singles off 95 into center. Two out knock and LSU's first base runner. Trey Morgan's been hot now, hitting about 350 in postseason play. Gets a sinker middle middle. A bullet right back up the box. And extend the inning for Hayden Travinsky, who has been one of the best stories in this LSU lineup second half of the season. Redshirt junior catcher from Shreveport, Louisiana, who's actually got a higher OPS than Dylan Cruz and Tommy White, obviously in a smaller sample size, but that's how good he's been. First pitch swinging, and he pops one up back to Berkey's direction. Maybe the best example of the insane depth on this roster is the fact that the, the leader of this team in OPS basically didn't play their first 30 games. <laughs> He's got 89 at bats. And now he's hitting cleanup in game one of the College World Series. A one to Travinsky is up high. Travinsky has fought injuries over the last few seasons. Meniscus and elbow, and shoulder, and concussion. Jake Johnson, his head coach, said to us earlier today, it's the talent we thought we could see when we first arrived on the scene in Baton Rouge. On the edge, he called strike with the cutter. So the ability to shake the ball both ways, Lindsey's showing you early in this game, right? Just a little bit of a dark cutter on the outside edge, and then we've seen the bowling ball sinker that runs into right-handers. Two outs, man at first in the home half of the first. Line toward right center field by Travinsky and on the move. Christian Scott makes the catch and the inning is over. Zeroes on both sides out of the gates at Omaha. It is an assassin's mind with all the uh, talent in the world and uh, the preparation of a Navy SEAL. You put all those things together and, and you put together the, the greatest college pitching season that I've ever seen. What a quote by Jay Johnson. He likes to compare him to Steven Strasburg. Says just the ability to have the greatest plan in the world, go into it, and it doesn't matter. You throw whatever you want, whenever you want. There's just not much people can do against it. Said you also take the preparation. He says he probably prepares better with that Air Force background than most 10 to 12 year leaguers in the major leagues. Hmm. I mean, you saw the note, Chris. 14 of the 20 pitches in the first were 100 plus. And yeah, it's about the person too, and the self discipline and the leadership in the clubhouse for Paul Skeens, who goes back to work in the second and gets his third strikeout. Fan Zane Denton, the third baseman in the five spot, one away in the second. I think the thing with Skeens, and this is how you punch out now 191 at walk 18, yes, velocity is the first thing that jumps out, and obviously it does, but the off speed stuff is so good too. That, that, 
mean, Denton saw three pitches of a guy that throws 102, and he didn't see one fastball. It was a breaking ball to start two straight changeups for Skeens' third strike out of the night. Now he faces the DH for the balls, Griffin Merritt, the Cincinnati transfer and a leader for Tennessee, and he doesn't get a fastball either. No, but again, that's what you have to live with, right? You're going to go up there with fastball timing, and if, if he throws that slider, you're going to miss. You get three strikes, right? You, you got to take your A-plus swing. Yeah. Down it at 100. And then he goes off the edge and brings it back at 100. I mean, the command, it's not just control, it's command at 100 miles an hour. Two years at Air Force as a two-way player, and then, of course, transferred to LSU in the offseason. This is about the only thing that will slow him down. And a beach ball. Yeah. Too, which this is, that's, that's our first one. Yeah, Saturday I night. I keep a beach ball count every year. Saturday night feels one, right. I keep it right on the edge of my book, one. Skeens fastball 100 or more, 15 tonight, beach ball one. Breaking ball again for strikeout four. Merritt goes down via the punch out, two gone. He's thrown one fastball in the inning, he struck two guys out. This is the one, here's what is so interesting about Skeens. His average fastball velocity this year is up five miles an hour, okay? It's over 98 miles an hour, so it's over five over last year. His average slider velocity is actually down one. He's just reshaped the pitch and changed the way that it is, and the outcome on it has been very different. Here's Blake Burke, power hitting first baseman, yeah. takes 100 for strike one. Blake Burke turned one around in the Super Regionals and hit it 479 feet in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He's got juice. Swings through a heater, and it's nothing in two. The ball Wyatt Langford hit last night, the longest home run in the history of this stadium, went 456 feet. The ball Blake Burke hit in the Super Regionals, 25 feet further or so than that one. That's uh... 79. <laughs> oh, 2 Man. Fouled away. Just to give you a little perspective on how far that ball was hit. I think it would have taken a dot out of his face <laughs> if he hit that one <laughs> on the scoreboard. Blake Burke just spoiled the would-be immaculate inning. 0-2. Skeens with a back foot breaking ball. Yeah, both these teams can hit the home run. Tennessee sixth in the country in homers, 125 of them. Remember last year, hit 158, fourth most in D1 history. And LSU, for its part, second in the country with a buck 33 this year. Let it go! Check swing. And again, no swing from Blake Burke. Blake Burke's really been struggling down the stretch, but those are some really good takes. Yeah. That, that will tell you that, yeah, you got to get ready for the heater, but not cheating so much that he can't lay off a couple breaking balls down and in. Skeen's ready with a 2 2. All misses and a full count. See how high Trevinsky set up right there? That's what they were trying to do. Trevinsky wanted it too. He, yeah. was, he was starting his jog off the field. Payoff pitch. Yes! That's six outs so far. Five of them have ended the exact same way. Paul Skeen's doing Paul Skeen stuff. Got a good one tonight. One and a half on a perfect night in Omaha. We are scoreless. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. KP said a perfect night here in Omaha, Nebraska, and this place has filled in as we thought it would. Big ticket prices that we've been tracking all week. What was it, KP, a little earlier in the week? Like average ticket price of 400 something yeah the good ones were 400 to 500 bucks i think it went down a little bit later on but these two teams show up that's not really a shock andrew lindsey works in the bottom of the second with no score here on day two at the college world series it's the lsu dh Cade beloso grad student from new orleans that ops the best of his career Essentially a four-year starter for the Tigers. Oh, that's inside. After the ACL injury last year, healthy this year. Here comes the 3-0. 
That's a strike yeah. on the outside part of the plate. Kind of a fascinating matchup, right? Two guys that weren't so sure they were going to be playing baseball a year ago. Okay, Beloso almost walked away from the game. Jay Johnson talked him out of it. Wow, as, as he responded with a monster season. Yeah. That's a strike, full count. Probably will be his last run, similar to BT Ryapel. Got other plans for his future, but man, he has put together some really big hits for this Tiger team down the stretch. Yeah, Cade was telling us the other day that Jay Johnson said to him right around the time after the ACL injury at the start of last season, I don't know what you have planned for the rest of your life, but I'm not letting you go like this. You got to finish this thing. And here he is back, and along with his head coach in Omaha at the Men's College World Series. Bouncing ball foul. When he comes back, he's got OPS over 1,000. 14 homers. He's, he's hitting right in the middle of the lineup. Three this postseason. Such a neat story. A kid that loves the pur purple and gold and making the most out of his last go around. Fun loving guy. Waiting on a 3 2 from Lindsay. And if you got confidence in that changeup, this is the top of the right here. That's 95 and just about. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Ooh, what we're we working with her. Speaking of confidence. Go Tigers. We got to get that. on that hot dog. <laughs> I was going to say, we got to get that to David Esker. Blake Burke snares it and retires Beloso for the first out here in the home half of the second. This is a big part of the story of why Tennessee's in Omaha. The defense has played much better. KP talked about their second half turnaround. They went to a more defensive lineup. They have certainly caught the ball better. Blake Burke, who actually leads this team in airs, at first base, taking away extra bases from Kay Beloso on a nice backhand. It's crazy when you watch Berg, too, because his movements around the base look like he's a plus first baseman. It just it all come together all the time. Definitely has the two yeah. set to do it, right? Yeah. It's the first time out there, and I, I, I would expect him to continue to improve. That was a nice play there. Here's Gavin Dugas, second baseman in the sixth spot, and it's a ball and a strike from Andrew Lindsay. Now yeah, this Tennessee team 43 and 20 of course preseason number two like we said and KP showed you that five and ten start in the SEC got hot to finish the season got a two seed in the Clemson regional one there then in the supers at Southern Miss came back from losing that first game and so they get here and look who's here. Peyton Manning was here yesterday as well. This sky to left field by Dugas. See ya. LSU strikes first. to just anybody in LSU. They give it to the leader. And Gavin Dugas has been coming up with monster hits for LSU his entire career. How about a hanging sinker that is launched into the left field seats. The Tigers strike first. Fitting that it would come from the guy wearing number eight. We told you the second best home run hitting team in the country. Yeah. And now Gavin Dugas has 16 this season and 43 for his career. It's one zip, LSU in the second. And now Braden Joe Bear with a hot shot. And Lindsey throws him out on the comebacker for round number two. That's nifty. Because that one's getting into center field. You guys going to be smiling for a long time after hitting one that far. Back to back 110 off the bat. 110 in the seats and 110 off the backhand stab right there by Lindsey. Beloso was 106 2 on the ground. There's been some hard contact here in the second off Lindsay. Now the shortstop, the junior Jordan Thompson, been a three year starter, and the defense has improved quite a bit this season for the California native. Last month, Kylie McDaniel had him number 73 on his MLB draft rankings. Jay Johnson was saying to us today, I haven't heard a ton on Jordan Thompson on the draft, and 
I think that means because there's a few teams that probably really like him in a draft class that maybe doesn't have a ton of true shortstops out there. This one popped up foul. Well, there are a bunch of high school oh, middle infielders oh. that are going to go high. I'd say in the college ranks, Jordan Thompson has proven this year that he could stick at shortstop. Last year, definitely some questions about whether or not he could play that position. This year, he's shown range, arm strength, consistency, and power with the bat. Take strike three calls. Lindsey lands a breaking ball to end the inning, but Gavin Dugas strikes first for LSU. The Tigers got some serious juice in this lineup, and Gavin Dugas has been doing it for years. A launch piece to get the party started for the Tiger favorite. Nice night, boys. This is okay. This is okay. Got a home run, some good pitching on both sides. We go to the third. Paul Skeens back to work. Another swing and miss that time on a changeup to start out. The Tennessee right fielder in the eighth spot, the veteran Christian Scott. 903 OPS. He's waited his turn throughout his career. A couple of changeups in perfect spots to begin. Yeah, and I think this is what people don't know about Paul Skeens. He doesn't have to lean on that, but it shows you what, how he respects this lineup. He has complete command of that pitch. His 0-2 is a fastball at 100 for strikeout, number six. I don't, I'm going to be really interested to see what a, whoever drafts him, and it's got to be one of the first three teams, how fast they put him in the big leagues. This is a major league starter right now today and it, it's not like your five guy I mean this is somebody you're rolling out there and saying okay you go get the big boys right now it, it's uh, I mean, it's stuff you just don't see here's Cal Stark oh, the Tennessee outside. catcher in the nine spot first fastball, first fastball the first 20 fastballs of the game were 100 miles an hour what's wrong it's 99 <laughs> let's get a mound visit what out Riding it on the hands, back to 100. All right, now we go. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's what Dylan Cruz said after Paul Skeen starting the Super Regionals. He said, I don't think that kid should be here. I think he should be pitching for a major league team right now. Breaking ball down it away. Our Kylie McDaniel wrote last month that Skeens is the best draft pitching prospect since Garrett Cole a dozen years ago. 2-1, and Stark bounces it foul. I think that's a great call. This pure stuff, I think, checks similar boxes. I don't remember Cole's changeup. He didn't throw it a whole lot. But that's where I would probably put Skeens just a, a click higher. The other thing I'd put a click higher is the control. I mean, the, the supreme control that comes with, with that, with a 101-mile-an-hour fastball. He doesn't walk anybody. Has been in some full counts. Worked by Tennessee hitters the first time through. This one is Sky. Short center. Thompson calls for it. And on the back pedal, the shortstop makes the catch. For out number two. Half dozen Ks, KP. All right, six of them. Five to six swing. What's the movement? The velocity's one, but movement's another. 25 fastballs so far tonight for Paul Skeens. 22, about 100 miles an hour or more. He's got that one too. Against the righties, he'll show a little slider. They go back and back it up, and the changeup's been outstanding. He's, I mean, he's got all three of them in the plus side tonight. So up to 194 for the season. Came in with a buck 88. That was the most for any D1 pitcher since Trevor Bauer in 2011. And of course, our teammate Ben McDonald. He's got that SEC and LSU record. Of course. 202 in 1989. Maui Ahuna saw 102 his first time, and he gets 100 for strike two. 88 mile an hour changeup. That's the thing. It's a it's a big. It's still a 12, 13 mile an hour difference between the two. Skeens delivers. Ahuna fouls it off at the plate. Here's what's crazy, right? You, you go back 15, 20 years, and the changeup he just threw. At 89 miles an hour, he'd have been. And that guy's got a really good sinker. Yeah. 
average D1 basketball. His basketball. Yeah. And that's his, that's, that's his changeup. And it's been well located just about every time. <laughs> oh, 2 Oh, oh that's takes. outside. He committed on August 1st. Jay Johnson said, I was out recruiting. I was in a hotel room with my wife. My wife started crying, and I punched a wall in the hotel <laughs> when Paul Skeens right. committed. That's one the athletic department will let you put on the extension for. They don't mind that. We'll fix the wall. As long as he's coming, we're okay. Well, he is Skeens, and that's seven punch outs so far. Welcome back to Omaha, bottom of the third. Andrew Lindsay back out in the mound for the Vols. And he spent last year away from baseball, actually college baseball, because he was the coach of the Tennessee River Baseball Raptors, 13 and under, a travel ball team out of New Johnsonville, Tennessee. That wasn't the only thing that he did in his year away from baseball. He has never gotten into the personal reason why he left, but he traveled the country. He also went back home, lived with his dad. He went to a temp agency to get work, and what he ended up doing was his hometown was destroyed by some floods, so he started working, repairing roads, helping clean up debris. He said, doing all that, giving back to my hometown. I also built a better relationship with God. And then when he was working with the 13 and under team, he was throwing bullpens, and he was like, you know what? Still kind of miss this. And that's how he started ending up here tonight. And here he is in Omaha, Chris, as Josh Pearson reads him in the bottom of the third with a single to right out of the nine spot for LSU up a run. And he was in the Appalachian League pitching. And eventually, Frank Anderson found his way to go watch Andrew Lindsay. And uh, the Tennessee pitching coach knew he wanted him. Yeah, I mean, the, his head coach was buddies with Chad Zerker, who's the baseball ops guy at Tennessee. He said, hey, man, we, we got a dude you might need to come see. Frank Anderson saw the track man numbers and went straight there to find him. And he wasn't pitching, right? No, he wasn't even pitching that day. They hit it off, and now he's wearing orange. That is strike one to Dylan Cruz. Frank Anderson knew the numbers worked. And he's seen he, a few of them. Yes, and, and he, uh, he knew there needed to be some urgency to go find him. And wow, I don't know that they knew he'd be throwing day one for him, but here he is facing Dylan Cruz. For one of the two best pitching staffs in the country. Cruz grounded to short its first down. He loved the line you had with Dylan Cruz. You asked him, hey, is this kind of the cherry on top for your career? You're checking that box of getting to Omaha. He said, no, it's the whipped cream because mm -hmm. the cherry on top is winning it all. I think he's such a great story and ambassador for the college game because he could have taken his millions and gone to play pro ball. And he'd probably be oh. in the big leagues right now. But he chose college baseball. He's been a star, the national freshman of the year, the two-time SEC player of the year, a Gold Spikes finalist. Now here he is in Omaha with a chance to win a College World Series, and he's going to get to the big leagues. That'll wait, but you only get this opportunity once. It's, his career has been incredible to watch. Playing here for the first time. Bounces this one to right side, pass Burke into right field. Pearson stops at second. Back-to-back -back singles to begin the third for LSU. One of the reasons his plate discipline has been so incredible all year is because of the way he lets the ball travel. Look at him. This ball gets deep. They're trying to go in. They miss out over the plate. The contact point is inside the front foot, so it's a bullet to the back side of the field. 108 mile an hour rocket into right field. And the Tigers got two on with nobody out here in the third. And one of the best RBI guys in America up to bat. And Tommy White, who struck out on 96. Nasty sinker the first time from Andrew Lindsay. And a bind here in the third. First pitch, oh. and Tommy White takes ball one. Tennessee wanted that one. Don't blame him. Looked like Tony Vantello said, where's that? Sixth year head coach, St. Louis native. Here for the second time in three years. White cuts through the cutter. Perfectly executed cutter out and a little bit up, which is a really tough pitch to get to. Now I think you go back to that sinker and see if you can't get a 5-4-3 or 6-4-3 double play right here. Lindsay's 1-1. One, one. 
It was a sinker, a little bit up. Not quite getting it in there this inning, KP. That's that's two he's missed out over the plate trying to go down and in. But it's got so much movement. Uh, it's still not easy to square up, but yet look at the exit velos the last few innings for LSU. They've hit a lot of balls hard so far. Pearson and Cruz aboard. Lindsay's one two. Ball that's outside. Tried to elevate. And that's the plan against White. He will chase up. He did this quite a bit in the regionals. Paul Skeens watches on. He'd like a few more runs for comfort. Probably like a bat. <laughs> Could probably hit. Jay Johnson said he might be able to hit 20 home runs. Former catcher as well at Air Force. That is a sinker, and Lindsey has to settle for one. Second and third, one down. He got that one in there. Well, that's twice. <laughs> I mean, he, he struck out Tommy White the first time on the two seamer that came in under his hands. And look at this thing take off. Ugh. That is. Yeah. Just pull that barrel in as fast as you possibly can. Advance the runners. I mean, if you look at the good side of it, it wasn't hit hard enough to, to double anybody up. So now the Tigers are two in scoring position here with just one out. Okay, gotcha. Some bodies filter into the Tennessee pen. Trey Morgan bats, singled his first out. Breaking ball yeah. for a strike at the top of the zone. Curveball, you don't see a lot of that from Lindsay. Interesting, Tennessee's going to play the infield back here. I, I just, it feels like up against Paul Skeens. You'd play the infield in here and take your chances. A one. Sinker oh, inside. I know you don't probably love it because it's two runs if a ball gets through that normally wouldn't. Man, 2 0 feels like a. Yeah, two feels like a lot tonight. Feels like a lot. One one pitch. That's a strike. Feels like the high breaking ball is is getting called in this yeah. zone tonight. Well, I, I think it's the one that never used to get called. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, if it comes over as a strike, even if it didn't used to get called, it's a strike. Now Lindsay's one two to Morgan. On the crowd, off the glove of Lindsay. Gets the out and the run scores. Tried to handle the comebacker. Josh Pearson taps home, but it's two zip LSU. Trey Morgan now back to back bullets up the middle. Nice job there by Lindsay of getting the glove on at number one, but then keeping your poise, right? You are running a ways to get to this ball and to turn fire and throw a strike. It was a nice job there by the Tennessee right hander, but LSU with a big run number two here in the third. Now Hayden Travinsky, first pitch swinging off the end of his bag. Burke flips. Inning over. Is two enough for Paul Skeens? We'll find out. Jay Johnson's with Chris Budden when we come back for the fourth. Welcome back to Omaha. Top of the fourth here with Jay Johnson, LSU head coach. Paul Skeens, seven strikeouts. What's it been like to coach him this season? Sign me up for that all the time. I think his <laughs> stuff is amazing, but what's underrated is the pitch execution, and he's executing at a high level. Longtime LSU head coach Skip Bertman talked to the team before. You guys share a lot of stories together. What's the advice he's given you this week heading into Omaha? Be yourself. You know, he was the best championship coach in this environment of all time. And uh, our team emulates a lot of those teams, and I know that's something he's really proud of. It's the first time for these guys to be here. What have you seen in terms of the preparation and how they've handled the moment so far? Yeah, phenomenal. Great week of practice. Loose when we need to be loose, focused when we need to be focused. Helps when Skeens is out there tonight. <laughs> That helps a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, he'd sign up for that uh, whenever. <laughs> the season filled with incredible expectations for LSU, and they get here to Omaha for the first time since 2017. Paul Skeens makes you a pretty good coach. That, that helps. Like really good players. Funny how that, that it just helps. Yeah, and Jay Johnson pretty good at getting them. Oh yeah. man, I guess. One of the best recruiters in the sport. That's that's why he's at LSU. The winner of the Paul Skeen sweepstakes. We hit on it a little bit earlier. What gets overlooked with Skeens, he was the Olerud two-way player of the year last year as a hitter and a pitcher. And this year, Jay Johnson will tell the story that it was, it was in February and before the season. I'm going to write on right change up, by the way. Um, and ultimately, he said, if, if I had to watch him hit all year, 
Like I, I would have been nervous every single pitch that he was up there just in case something got away and it hit him on a finger and ends up costing him and I would say it was more of a mutual decision to say you know what that stuff from 60 feet six inches away might make you a whole lot of American money. <laughs> let, let, let's let's just let's do that because that's really good. And they have a few bats. Yeah they got a couple. <laughs> One one to Hunter Ensley and he cuts through the slider. Change up down and in. Two seamer in at 99. Then the bigger breaking ball. That wasn't the sweeper. That was the one that has a little more top to bottom. And now a fastball line to short past the dive of Thompson. Hunter Ensley's got a couple of hits off Paul Skeens. The only two for Tennessee, and this one begins the fourth. It's just impressive. I mean, the young man can really handle Velo. How about Velo on the inner third of the plate? Does a really nice job of keeping his arms connected to his torso. That makes the path to the back of the ball shorter and a bullet in the six hole. This is that combo we talked about with the Vols. Ensley and Dickey both hit barrels the first time through. And boy, do they need Dickey to deliver right here. Their big bat in the three spot in the lineup. He lined out to third at 104 off his bat right at Tommy White in the first. Ball, Jared Dickey, outside. by the way, sensed that some good games were coming for Hunter Ensley when we chatted with him. Hunter Ensley had been five for his last 34, his last nine games. And Jared Dickey said to us, he's taking some really good swings in the cage. He hasn't been getting the best breaks. I feel some good days coming for him. And Ensley's been on twice against Skeens. Ensley is a perfect matchup if there is one for Velo because of how short the barrel is. Dickey does such a great job of using the backside of the field. Doesn't try to create bat speed with his upper body. He does a really good job of just using his hands and getting the barrel where it needs to go. Backside of the field there, a fly ball to left. And Josh Pearson's in for the first down. Second time through for this Tennessee lineup here in the fourth. So here's Christian Moore struck out looking at 101 to end the first inning. You asked Christian Moore if that was as good a hot stretch back in the regional as he's ever had. He said, well, Remember I had that home run spree, as he called it, earlier this year? He said that was actually the best. It was a binge, a four-game stretch from late April to early May where he hit six. And he slugs this one to left, and Josh Pearson roams into a sliding catch for out number two. KP, we've seen it before here. Le left field in, in Omaha can be very tough this time of night, and Josh Pearson had to not only battle the sun, but then a, a ball that was hit off the end of the bat and kind of sinking down and away from him, and that is not an easy play. Well, and it was a changeup, and so it got just off the end of the bat, and I think for Pearson, and it's understandable, when you see the ball come off at that trajectory off the bat of Moore, you think that one's going to go pretty deep. But with the changeup, he was just out in front of it enough, and it, it just missed the barrel. We've seen more changeups tonight from Skeens than many, may, maybe any game that we've seen him pitch this year. Ball oh, that's outside. Does Pearson maybe want to put the sunglasses on? <laughs> feels that feels helpful at this time of night. He's like using his hand and his glove. I, I, maybe he's forgotten he's got a nice, pretty pair of sunglasses on top of his hat. Was it the squinting that, that tipped <laughs> look, you off? Look on at that? my man. He's using his hand. Zane Denton takes yeah. a strike at the top outer edge of the zone at 101. How about this guy? Some of the big swings he's had as well. The Alabama transfer, four home runs in six games in the NCAA tournament. Two of the biggest home, run, home runs in the history of the Tennessee program off the bat of Zane Denton. Yeah. Skeens lands with his footing. He's shaking his head, fixing that landing spot. It was a strike. Down to their last strike against Clemson, a three-run homer in the ninth. Out of the stadium. Out of the stadium. One, two to him. Runs away, run around the moon. Travinsky's throw. Got him. Hayden 
Gordon Travinsky cuts down Hunter Ensley to close out the top of the fourth. The emergence of Hayden Travinsky this year, and we talk about it offensively, but man, can he do this too? Maybe caught him a little bit by surprise. Ensley trying to steal one right there. Travinsky cuts him down. On Sunday, the Yankees are at Fenway Park for this weekend series finale. Game one went to Boston, led by Justin Turner. Yesterday, game two postponed until tomorrow afternoon. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown at 6, then the Yankees Red Sox at 7 Eastern Ball. here on ESPN and the ESPN app. The boys made their flight today, too. Did they? They were a little jumpy. Yeah, they were. 605 <laughs> wheels up, and uh, the sun delay got them for about an hour, but they scooted on down the road. Sun delay, did Ball. I hear that correctly? He did. All rejoice when you make the flights. Father's Day tomorrow, of course. It's a good onesie. 2-0 to Cade Beloso is yeah. a strike <laughs> from Andrew Lindsay. KP has one of those. Yep. Mine's like a 44 ski. 2-1. Cut and a miss. Good hook. Go, Go. Lindsay getting into his bag here a little bit, shaping that breaking ball, the bigger curveball as opposed to that shorter cutter that we've seen mostly from him. Is 2-2. Two -two. Bounce to first and foul. I'll tell you what, whoever gets Lindsay in pro ball is going to have a lot of fun because the metrics are going to show you a lot of different things you can do with it. I mean, we saw that the big top to bottom breaking ball, which is rare for a guy that throws a real sinker. Usually it's a slider that comes behind it. He's got a decent little change up. But that two seamer can be special. Hey, hey. Strike three calls. Let's take a look at the last time Gavin Dugas strolled to the dish. How about a hanging sinker? And sinkers that don't sink go in the upper tank, KP. 35 degree launch, 110 exit below, 412 feet for the Tiger veteran. That was the first run on the board. A loud swing of the bat from Gavin Dugas. They added another in the third. It's 2 nothing, and now he goes first pitch swinging and fouls it away. We have had some loud contact here. Uh -huh. How about Wyatt Langford last night for Florida? 456 feet, the longest home run ever tracked in this ballpark. Oh, well, it, it feels that because of how talented the field is, we, we would get the longest home run ever hit this week, right? Probably the fastest pitch ever thrown here. I mean, that, that's the kind of talent that's going to be on display throughout the course of this event. We're on day two. Yeah. Yeah. There's more to come. I was talking with Kylie today, Kylie McDaniel. He said something interesting that I hadn't heard yet, that the level of talent at the College World Series, maybe every year it's going to be more like this yeah. because of the portal and because of NIL. And because the draft is shorter. Mm -hmm. Right? The college game is bigger and brighter than it's ever been. I mean, when you get a guy like Dylan Cruz that says no to the draft and then has the career path that he's had, I, I think that only helps other younger stars consider bypassing the draft at, at 19 and choosing this experience. 3-1. Ball four. It's outside in a five-pitch walk. If you missed it, this is Wyatt Langford, projected top five pick in the draft in a few weeks, and he did this to tie the game in the comeback for Florida. Mm, down a run. You were chuckling. <laughs> if you added sound to this and you heard it, but it was about halfway out of this ballpark, you, you had a chuckle, like, I mean, a smush. Yeah, well, what are you doing when a guy hits the concession stand at a place that it used to be a big deal to scrape it over the wall? You, you giggle a little bit, especially when you like homers. Audible laughter. Yeah. Button said she's planning to go out there tomorrow and maybe have a, a snow cone where it landed. Braden Joe Bear takes a breaking ball for strike one. I know Ben's watching, and, and so I'm if for our friends in Louisiana, I know you think it's a snowball. It's not. It's a snow cone. It's that's what yeah, it is. But Ben always corrects me and says it's a snowball, but he's he's incorrect. Slice foul, nothing to two. Yep. 
Yep. I, I, think, I think we're all in agreement on that. Thank you. Not shaved ice. In no. It's they put it in a cone. cone. They should. It's a if shaved they don't, ice cone. they should be shut down. <laughs> Rule with an iron fist at the chuck. Good to hear Big Ben's okay and to see him on the air yeah. today. He's a gamer. <laughs> he is. Hurt, not injured. Oh, I mean, when you're 613, the signs are, I mean, they, they, they attack you in a little bit different way when you're running. Lindsay's ready with an 0-2. Line pass Park. More hard contact from Braden Bear. And Dugas first to third, the throw to second. Does not get him. It's a double in the right, and second and third for LSU. There's a reason this offense has been almost impossible to hold down throughout the course of the season. It's because of the depth. Dugas walks. Joe Bear with a rocket to right field, and Joe Bear puts a gas pedal down and turns what a lot of people would be content to have a single on into a double. And the Tigers continue. Look, that is a dive that Charlie Hustle would be proud of right there. The Tigers continue to get great contributions in the back half of their batting order. And in an 0-2 count, nonetheless, 103 off the bat. And hard contact for Braden Bear. So a couple of right-handers up and working in the ball's pen. Now let's see how they play it, right? You get Jordan Thompson up, down by two already. Again, that same situation we talked about last inning where it's second and third with one out. Will Tennessee here in the fourth, will they concede a run on a ground ball or are they coming in here too? Or are they, are they gonna decide to come in here? Doesn't look like it. Aaron Combs and Seth Halverson. He's got big time stuff as well. Up for Tennessee. So not in all the way around. Out of the windup, first pitch to Jordan Thompson. A strike one on the cutter. When these teams met in the regular season, Jordan Thompson had the big hit in game one in late March at the box. Chops this one foul, and he's quickly down, nothing at two. Bases clearing the right center to break a 2-2 tie at the bottom of the eighth in front of more than 13,000. Largest in the history of the stadium. He's been clutch for this team this year. One of the first words Jay Johnson uses to describe him. That one runs up high. Andrew Lindsay trying to bear down. They brought him in to be the closer. High leverage spot for him in the fourth. Breaking ball doesn't tempt Thompson with two strikes. A nice job back there by Cal Stark. Made that block look easy. Soften that chest protector. Angle your body back towards home plate. And give your right hander some trust to bury the next breaking ball. LSU in search of more insurance. For the man with the Raleigh finger stash. Cut on and miss. One of the best sinkers yet for Andrew Lindsay. Two down. That was like the one he threw Tommy White back in the first. To where it, it starts on the inside third at least, maybe inside corner. And then watch the down on that thing. It, it gyros pretty good. You, you see that spin when it's coming in, those two seamers going sideways. And that's when gravity acts on that and just pushes it further down. But that will be the last pitch of the night. For Andrew Lindsay, who goes three and two thirds and departs with a steely gaze at his head coach, who goes to the bullpen. Aaron Combs comes on when we come back in the fourth in Omaha. We talk about the sinker today for Andrew Lindsay, and it was really good. So was his cutter. Cutter a few times that guys are so worried about that two seamer coming back in. So the cutter got some swing and miss, but here's what happened when that sinker didn't quite get where he wanted to. This ball was. Hammered out to left. Gavin Dugas home run, and then Dylan Cruz goes backside on the sinker that catches a little bit too much. I don't know that 
I don't know that the numbers necessarily match the stuff. The stuff was really good. The approach from LSU was outstanding mm -hmm. today because the amount of hard contact in three and two thirds in it against a guy that's got a chance to pitch in the big leagues, pretty impressive. All right, so lefty batter now in Josh Pearson and Berkey. They go to Aaron Combs, the right-hander. Yeah, they like his changeup. This is this is a move they they went to in the super regional as well, and so it's it's kind of an upshoot fastball. The velo's not electric, but he'll work that go. fastball to the top of the zone and then pair it with the changeup to the bottom. Pearson's got an 863 OPS this year against righties and it's a breaking ball on the back door to start for strike one combs the redshirt sophomore from sarasota florida in his first year at tennessee opponents hitting just 189 against him a couple of appearances so far in the ncaa tournament now at his third school in three years started his career at coastal carolina but missed the entire year due to injury, took a medical red shirt, and then went to junior college in Florida. That's down two and one on the change. Yeah, so there you go. Fastball up, change up down, and it, the whiff rate on the fastball is insane. He's got a 42% whiff rate. His fastball average is 18. Mm. So even though the velo isn't special, the results yeah, are. You're gonna get me. Thank you. And goes through a breaking ball to get it two and two on uh, Josh Pearson with Dugas at third and Joe Bear at second and two outs in this fourth. You saw Dylan Cruz on deck for LSU up two. That is cut on and miss. Combs with a heater for swing and miss and he leaves two in the fourth. Tony Vitello joins Chris Budden after this. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. Join Tony Vitello, Tennessee head coach, against Paul Skeen, second time through the order. What adjustments can your guys make? Well, he's clearly pitching backwards more than he normally does or normally than any 100-mile-an-hour arm does. Um, so the guys are going to have to pick a pitch and roll with it early in the count. I think you're trying to make your money off the fastball against him, and that's a challenge enough. But when you mix in the fact that he's mixing it up a lot, you got a little different game to play. Your team as a whole, after the heartbreak of last year, what about this team, the makeup, the character was built to get to Omaha? A lot of new faces. There's a little bit of bitterness or extra motivation built in for some of these guys. But some guys came into the program as freshmen or first-year guys, JUCO guys like Combsy right there. And they're like every other kid. They dream of getting here. Um, but you can't do that early in the year. I think our guys thought they could. Uh, it's a long journey for all these teams, and our guys did a good job of kind of finding their way as the year went on. I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. That's what he told us this morning, too, that, yeah, it is validating getting here this season. And, yeah, it does help a little bit, the bitterness from outside. last year. Yeah, I mean, look, they, that was as much bravado as we've ever seen from a college baseball team. They were great. They stuck their chest out. They played with a swagger that you either loved or hated. And so when it didn't end well, they wore it. And yeah. that's just the way it was, right? And so what I would give them a bunch of credit for is they just put their nose down and went back to work. They reconstructed a roster. This is nine new position players. It's crazy. That, that are on the field. Burke and Moore DH some. Dickey was started the yeah. year in left field, but then was hurt. Like, this is a brand new team. Now, the pitching staff, most of it came back. So the coaching job to get back to here has been incredible, especially with managing the rough waters in between. Three and two as Skeens has come back from 3-0 against Zane Denton. Struck out his first time and then was at the plate when Hunter Ensley was caught stealing. Griffin Merritt next. Payoff pitch on foul. Yeah, that losing stretch to start the year. More losses than they expected as the preseason number two. Christian Moore told us it felt like a dark cloud over us for a good bit of time this season. We kept saying we came together to get hey, hey. here. Strike three called. A hundred on the black and a smirk from Paul Skeens, his eighth K. I mean, Skeens is good enough on his own. Um, but the, the zone is, is wider tonight than we've seen a lot during the course of the season. And I think that's kind of the look from Zane Denton right there is, is he thought that one was I thought that one was was a little bit out there too. 
if you're going to give him a little bit more, that, that road tough. gets that <laughs> road gets really hard. Griffin Merritt off the hands, shoots one into right field, the base hit. One out single for Griffin Merritt, the DH, and the third hit of the ball game for Tennessee. Well, not exactly lighten up the exit velo, but watch the lead arm here. Watch how short this left arm stays close to the body, right? So you keep that left arm connected to the chest. That allows the barrel to get just enough of that baseball and punch it into right field. Balls have a base runner. Look, this is the, this is what you got. You got a runner on with a guy who has a puncher's chance every time he comes up to bat. Somebody's going to have to run into one for this Tennessee offense to strike. First pitch swinging from Burke. But we told you when about 480 to the church in Hattiesburg for number 16. And this is first home run since April. Christian Moore said this as getting water. I didn't even see it. My back was turned. I heard it. I said, oh, yeah. That's Blake Burke. A one. That's outside oh. with the change. Surprised. I mean, uh, Cruz is playing pretty shallow in the outfield right now. Pearson's playing fairly shallow and left with the wind blowing out and the guy standing at the plate that, that can hit it a mile. I mean, oh, Cruz can go get it, don't get me wrong, but they can hit it over his head right now. Well, and I'm also surprised that they're not playing. I know the, the velo is extreme, but for the most part, Blake Burke's going to hit the ball on the ground to the right of second base. They're playing a pretty traditional infield alignment as well, KP. Slightly oppo in the outfield and shallow in center and a, a pretty standard infield approach here. 2-1, and Burke skies this one. Shallow in the left. And Pearson for round number two. I told you they shouldn't play deeper. Yeah, why would you go in? I just deeper? said should not be playing deeper in the outfield. Jay Johnson, one, KP. Yep. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Hang in there, kid. Only halfway through. Cal Peterson, Chris Burke, Mike Bodico with you upstairs. Chris Budden down at field level. Our entire crew behind the scenes. All right, so two outs now. Griffin Merritt still over at first and to the eighth spot. For Christian Scott, the fifth year senior from Clarksville, Tennessee. This guy had 39 hits his first four years. He's got 40 this year alone. Tony Vitello told us this morning, so happy for Scott. He gets to play now every day. He's really come along as a leader and isn't trying to take the world by storm, which maybe he was doing at the beginning of this season. Yeah, early part of that story was they had a lot of guys fighting for time. You know, and so it, it, it's hard. Last year, everybody essentially knew their spots. This year, there was a bunch of guys knowing there was a ton of playing time up for grabs. So, you know, it's it's hard to build team chemistry when you're, you're duking it out with your with the guy in the locker next to you for playing time. And Christian Scott settled in. He's out there because of his defense. But the offense has been plenty good. 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's yeah, Tony Vitello said about the defense, we can't have arms frustrated by guys not making plays behind him because the pitching staff is that good and that talented. Yeah, they have been. I mean, by the numbers, probably the second best pitching staff in the country behind only Wake Forest. 2-1 to Scott. Cut on and miss. Stay there. That bat path. Little barrel lag right there. And when you see that with an elevated fastball, there is no reason. You, you throw something off speed to give him a chance right there. That, that's no reason to go away from that one. Skeens 2 2. Cut on and miss. 109 Ks in five shutout for Paul Skeens. LSU fans saying that tonight. So number one got the win against Stanford in comeback fashion and well we've had comebacks and we've had one run game so far in these first couple of days at the Men's College World Series. Three one run games? I mean are you kidding me? We, we knew this was going to be incredible tournament but we didn't know we were going to get this kind of drama early.
Another pitching change for Tennessee. They go to the fifth-year senior in his second year with the Vols. First-year pitching for him, Seth Halverson, the Missouri transfer. Yeah, that's another thumber. I mean, that's that's what you're going to see for Tennessee. He's only going to probably throw 98. Hmm. So just a just a tick down from Skeens. Average fastball velo this year for Halverson, 96 miles an hour. Most of his work, in fact, almost all of his work has been out of the bullpen. Just one start this year, but. Halverson does have the ability to go deeper into games and, and for almost any other team in the country Seth Halverson's in your weekend rotation. It's it's that kind of stuff. He's got the top of the lineup for LSU starting with Dillard Cruz singled his last time came off his bat at 108. He takes 98 down. Two appearances in the NCAA tournament for Halverson. It's seven and a third just one hit. KP, you saw him in that 14 inning affair against Clemson. He went three and a third hitless in that one. Hey, that light on stuff. Breaking ball, the slider has good swing and miss. He'll throw the changeups more to lefties, but he will he will throw it to righties too. Cruz in the air, right field, and Christian Scott drifts back. What away. Yeah, speaking of the breaking ball, Tony Vitello was saying to us this morning that earlier in the season for Seth Halverson, in particular in that series against LSU, it was more a cement mixer. And he said Halverson's got it going now with the breaking ball. We saw the one he threw. Now it missed down and out of the zone, mm -hmm. but it had the, the action that you're looking for on the good curveball. Well, he's retired Cruz, and now Tommy White climbs in. Strikeout and a ground oh, down. He has seen a couple nasty sinkers. We're, we're getting close to our next hundred. How many? We, we said six was the number. I said six was you the number. You said six. I said five. Okay. What was it? I missed. It was a ninety-nine. It was ninety-nine. The, yeah, we had a ninety-nine. Can can we count that? No, you can't count that. <laughs> there was a pause, though. The worst question you've asked all week. Can we <laughs> count that? I knew that would get him. No. What one? one. If you weren't with us last night, these two brilliant baseball minds. Oh, uh, what's that? Is Scott Gustafson, producer, says clowns is actually now. He's called us worse. That's true. Put a wager on how many guys will hit 100 plus here in Omaha. One said six, one said five. White bounces it to short at Maui Ahuna. Two down. And so we are keeping track. Uh oh. This is pilot Tom Williams with the drone. Bring it on in. What do you say, Tommy? That a kid, Tommy. That boy, T. What a look. Wow. Look at this place. We have not seen a day like day one yesterday for a first day at the Men's College World Series. No, two. Two lasted back comebacks. I mean, the, the the drama was couldn't have scripted it any better. Ball at a strike on Trey Morgan, first baseman for LSU, single to center, and then an RBI ground out comebacker that he hit hard at Vol starter Andrew Lindsay. Ball down. Change up is normally. Mm -hmm. How good. Side. Opponents hitting a buck 99 coming in against Seth Alverson. Two and two. Close. Don't give me that look. I mean, it's math is math. I'm sorry. 99 is awesome, but it's still not 100. Not 100. Alverson nods and is 2 2. Oh, that's outside. Yes, misses outside. A full count. Aiden Travinsky would be next in the cleanup spot. 3 2 on the way. Oh, that was filthy. Just a sick change up from Seth Alverson and a 1 2 3 fifth. Hey, we got a pretty good baseball game tonight. And this is a Capital One rewarding performance. And I wasn't supposed to talk there, but I am now. <laughs> nice strikeout so far for Paul Skeens. And I mean, just. Pick a superlative here. The fastball's been up to 102. He's thrown 30 fastballs 100 or higher. That's 
That's average Vila, folks. I mean, come on. It's just, I, I don't. You, you struggled to not overhype it, but the reality is, I've never seen anybody like this at mm -hmm. the collegiate level. I just haven't. He's dominant, yet it's become par for the course yeah. for Paul Skeens all season. He's got 9-1-2 and two for Tennessee, down 2 nothing in the sixth, starting with the catcher, Cal Stark, who had the first ball out of the infield back in the third oh. when he popped out to left center. And then it's also the person that Paul Skeens is as well. And Jay Johnson has raved about the impact he's made in that regard. Oh, that's outside. We were talking with Cade Beloso this week. He said it's the hunger inside of Paul Skeens. And we wanted to get, like, particulars about that and actual examples. It's incredible what Paul Skeens does. Yeah, we, we said, give us an example. This one's popped up. Big league pop up toward Tommy White for the first down to Chris. Well, Skeens wears the number 20. It's a special number for him in honor of 2018 Air Force Academy graduate Travis Wilkie, who was also a catcher for the baseball team, passed away in a training accident. And that number goes to the person that uh, exemplifies that spirit at the Air Force Academy. And Paul Skeens had met him during his first initial visit. So he called the family and said, I would like to continue that tradition when I head to Baton Rouge, ask for the number 20. And he talked to him about his time at Air Force. He gets very emotional knowing that it was a hard decision for him to leave. He said, listen, what I do every day, I throw a baseball. Some of those guys that I train with, they might not be here a couple years from now. And it's also why he wants to go back, be a part of the military when he's eventually done with his baseball career. Yeah, and that's pretty special. The commitment in that regard, even though transferring out of the Air Force was a better choice for him from obviously a baseball perspective. What's he do wrong? Like, where, where's where's the knock here? I, I was talking to some LSU fans before the game today. We were talking about schemes. And the guy looks at me. He's like, "Yeah, and I actually I see him every Sunday too. We go to the same church. <laughs> he, he shows up every Sunday. I mean, it's just it is so incredibly solidly consistent, no matter what he does." Well, this guy's got a few knocks off him, but Jordan tops in. Trey Morgan the stretch to get Hunter Ensley. Tennessee will want to have a look at this. He's he's as good as there is over there, but I I, I don't know if he can actually add length to his legs. I mean, he, he can do everything <laughs> right, but the, I I don't know how you stay on the bag on this. Heck of a play by Jordan Thompson, oh, yeah. showing you range to his left and the nifty flip of the hips there and a sidearm release. The ball fades a little up the line, but man, it does not look initially. Ooh, he's I out. No, he is out. He's out. Yeah. And I didn't think there was any chance he was out. Yeah, he's out. It. Wow. He's a magician. He was actually man. on top of the base, which is interesting there, too. Yeah, go critique him. Go down and critique him on it. Uh, I'm not critiquing. I'm, just, just I'm pointing out. I don't know that I've seen somebody stretch that far and be on the top of the bag as they're doing it. His footwork when he goes from one side of the base to the other and sometimes when he has to go behind a runner is, is as good as you're going to see over at first base. I, I think he kept it on. I think he's out. I think he's out. And I think he thought that he was off himself. It, it looked like on the first look that we showed of him yeah. that he was he saying, anymore. I pushed off. He doesn't anymore. And now his tune has changed. And nobody loves that more than the infielders, right? Yeah. Tommy White, Jordan Thompson are freaking out the most about it because they get to benefit. The ruling at first base is confirmed. Out. Tennessee has one challenge remaining. Our legs don't work that way. No, I, I don't know that any humans do, uh, except that one right there. That's as good as you're going to see at first base. Trey Morgan has done it his entire career, and he does it again. It's 2 nothing Tigers. Yeah, we are out here in Omaha, Nebraska. And the Men's College World Series, 76th edition. And we go to the bottom of the sixth in this okay, matchup okay. on day two. 
The last two of these eight teams to get onto this diamond at Charles Schwab Fields. Preseason number one, LSU against preseason number two, Tennessee. Last foul by Hayden Travinsky out of the cleanup spot for the Tigers up to nothing. Seth Alverson deals and this is down with a breaking ball two and one. Boy he looked good in the fifth inning for Tennessee. His two one. In the air, foul. Fastball up to 99, swing and miss change up at 87 88. A big breaking ball, 81 82. So you want to play in the SEC, huh? Like this is this is what you're getting out of the bullpen. So get to the cage, youngsters. Is that diving change up at 88? We, we were talking in break. If, if you were a scout 20 years ago and you had come to the game and you saw Halverson's last inning. You would turn in a report Ball four. that said this guy should go top 10 overall <laughs> because it was 99 with a wipeout changeup and a really good break of ball and, and he came out of the bullpen in the fourth inning, <laughs> sixth inning, whatever it was, fifth. Split the difference. Yeah, he's a fifth year senior out of the pen on uh, one of the best pitching staffs in the entire country. Play. Does issue the leadoff walk to Hayden Travinsky, and now here's Cade Beloso. Ground out to first, strikeout looking, and nothing in one on the breaking ball. Halverson's 01. Beloso pops this one up into shallow left. Dickey is there for the first down. Following our game tonight here on ESPN, stay with us for UFC Fight Night. Middleweights, number three, Marvin Vittori, and number four, Jared Cannonier battle it out at the Apex in Las Vegas. UFC Fight Night coming up next here on ESPN. Uh, you were doing our Capital One read earlier. Yeah. Any interest in that one yeah. next time? Yeah, no, I mean, I knocked the first one out. I don't know why we'd stop there. Yeah, it's my bad. <laughs> Apology accepted. Cut the miss. One out, one on for Gavin Dugas, who's homered and walked. Perky, you do many promo reads ever? Uh, I'll sneak one in from time to time. You ever done one accidentally? No. No. Yeah. I've seen a guy do it once. Wild pitch kicks away from Cal Stark trying to locate it. And Travinsky will settle for second. Got here. Uh oh, careful. <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> careful, Mr. Trevins. He's used to trotting. Hasn't had to make a lot of hard turns at second this year. It's like a home run every nine at bats for Hayden Trevinsky. Yeah, somewhere along the, the course of this season, Hayden Travinsky turned into Mike Piazza 2.0. I mean, the facial hair, the flow, uh, size-wise, it's it's very similar. 2-1. Breaking ball for a strike to Dugas. A good pitch. Two two, cut on and miss. Bottom just drops right out of it. That I'll, is filthy. Yeah, I'm, th this year the swing and miss percentage on the changeup against righty is about forty percent. This this shows you why, and that's that's glove side, which is tougher to get over the top of. A lot of times that real good sink to you have of the arm side, it's easier to finish that pitch. That one you really got to get extension, and it went straight down. That one acts almost as a split, just yeah. bottoms out at the zone, and that's where that velo speeds the hitters up. Nasty two-strike pitch there from Halverson. Here's Braden Jobert. Takes a slider yeah. that lands for a strike. 
So a couple of K's for Seth Halverson and a couple of hard pieces of contact for Joe Bear. Comebacker at 110 in the second, double at 103 to the pull side in the fourth. The 01 is a heater down at close 99. If you hit 399s, it counts as 100. You okay with that? It's good math. That's incorrect. <laughs> we are velocity seekers up here at the booth. Two outs, Travinsky board, and that's hit hard toward the gap in right center with Ensley on the move, and it's off the base of the wall. Travinsky scores. Joe Baird takes for third, headlong dive with a run scoring triple. LSU had been 0 for 6 with three strikeouts with runners in scoring position and guess who comes through again for him with another ball just tagged. How about put on a laser show, Mr. Joe Bear. I mean, it has been a missile fest from the start for him. A rocket up the middle, a bullet for a double, now a triple that just dented the center field wall. This is a hot shot off the glove of Ahuna, and it's 4-0. LSU in the sixth. Awfully impressive, boys. They are barreling up some really nasty stuff. A rocket to the backhand of Maui Ahuna hit so hard, it just doesn't stay in the glove at 103 miles an hour. And that is just back-to-back -back barrels for this talented and deep LSU lineup that continues to impress here in the back half. I know they've only scored four runs. I bet they've hit 10 balls, at least 100 off the bat tonight. That may be light. Tony Vitello points to the pen with Josh Pearson at the plate. And a four spot up there for LSU with a couple of runs here in this six. Tigers up on Tennessee. Jay Johnson said this week he thought his LSU team was playing the best baseball it has all season. And the Tigers here in the sixth in their first game in Omaha this year in their first trip back in six years with a couple more runs. Braden Joe Bear with a run scoring triple. Jordan Thompson drives in another. And it is 4-0 LSU on Tennessee. Kirby Connell comes in for Tennessee to go left on left with Josh Pearson with a man aboard and two outs. The veteran Southpaw will check on Jordan Thompson. This is going to be a little different look than we've seen so far this, this game, boys. The average fastball velo just a click under 86. But you're going to see a big breaking ball, a little bit of a tighter slider, and he could turn that change up over as well. Bullpen's been so good for Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. And only give it up just a couple of runs in the half dozen games in these last few weeks. No foul, nothing in two. The, the Tennessee fan base is nicknamed Kirby Connell Volley Fingers because of that classic mustache he's featuring. Now Skeens is Skeens has still got a ways to go to get there. Yeah, it's not even close no. with all due respect to Paul Skeens. By the way, when we asked him about his curl that we saw him twirling himself here in the dugout a few innings ago. He said he 
just started it like three or four days ago. Yeah, he needs to try harder, KP. It's not, it's not there yet. It's not to that level. Look at that piece of art. <laughs> Bounce the first, and Burke with a mishandle, but a recovery. Special delivery to the bag for Blake Burke. Connell, volley fingers, does his job, but it's LSU up 4 nothing through six. They struck first, and they've added three more since. 4 nothing is the Tigers' margin, and they got Paul Skeens on the bump. Now second all-time alone in SEC history with 197 strikeouts. Nine of them tonight. Five away. Five away from Big Ben's record. Three, four, and five, and the balls line up. And oh, that's ball outside. one to Jared Dickey. Line out to third, fly out to left for Dickey out of the three spot. Talking about the work ethic of Paul Skeens, Kate Belosa was sharing with us that Skeens goes around the locker room looking at teammates, pointing at him and saying, I outworked you, I outworked you, I outworked you. Pretty much every single day, Belosa told us. He said, well, is it like funny and guys are laughing about it? He said, no, he's not joking. He works that hard. But it is still kind of funny. Yeah, like, it it's funny, but it's true. And Skeens can pull it off because he's just that kind of dude. This slice to left, and Josh Pearson runs it down for the first out of the seventh. Boy, Jared Dickey's got to be scratching his head here a little bit. The Tigers have had him play perfectly. A rocket to Tommy White to start his day. This one, I don't know if that would have landed fair or not. Maybe just a touch foul, but Josh Pearson perfectly positioned. And Dickey on number one, now Christian Moore. A strikeout and a line out to left. Yeah. And a slider. All right, so we hear so often now, first time through the order, second time through the order, third time through the order. So this is on the year. Against Skeens, first time through the order, teams are hitting 140. Second time through the order, 219. So you would suspect normally that it continues to go north. Third time through the order, 144. <laughs> He gets better. That's crazy. Significantly better. His 90th pitch is oh. another slider to Moore. Slider's been a big part of the story this year, how he changed the grip. We gave him a baseball the other day, and he showed us just what that split slider grip is like. And it's been a world of difference. Fastball dotted at 99. 10 Ks for Skeens, two away. 91 strikeouts, and that one was 99, which is an 100 rookie. However, tonight, it's over 30 fastballs of 100 miles an hour or more from Skeens. With command. And the, the, that ball is down and on the edge. He hasn't walked anyone. Again. I think oh, what's wild outside. is you, you, you talked about it, five miles an hour jump from last year to this year as he's focused just on pitching and doesn't have the demands of being at the Air Force Academy. But last year he walked 30 in 85 innings. This oh. year coming into this start, 18 in 107 innings. So he, he the, the velo has jumped and the command has gotten not just better, but significantly better. 2-0 on Zane Denton who's struck out both times so far. Now we got 36 total pitches, 100 plus. 2 1. Can't yeah. add to it, but it's 2 and 2. 100 in every inning. Yeah, he's, just, he's, he's back down to 99 here in the seventh. He's easy to he nods yes to Hayden Travinsky and unleashes a fastball line foul at 100. He mentioned the demands of the Air Force. He told us he's getting more sleep now because of what the schedule was like at the academy. He said there'll be people in the dorms walking through the halls all night wheeling stuff around. 
Gets more sleep now. Oh, that's has recovered fine. better. And with giving up the two-way responsibilities as well. Jay Johnson with Santos today he doesn't do as much rotationally. Can recover more. He's got two outs here in the seventh. His 98th pitch is ball four. Ball four at 100 to Zane Denton, who is on with two outs for Tennessee, down by four. That's a great at bat. Took a nasty 2 2 changeup, then spit on a fastball off the edge. Zane Denton, who's been fantastic for Tennessee this entire postseason, with a big time quality at bat to extend the inning for Griffin Merritt. And we talked about this Tennessee offense needing to hit a ball at the ballpark. With Merritt and Burke up here back to back, I know there's two outs, but you know the, the opportunity certainly exists with these next two sluggers. Merritt's got a team leading 18 of them. He singled to the backside his last time off Skeens in the fifth. Gets a slagger to start. Merritt, a two-time captain at Cincinnati, transferred in to join the Vols, where he's been one of their leaders. Been around college baseball a while. Another slider. The AAC player of the year last year has not disappointed. It, it hasn't been perfect all year long, but you look at the, the overall production. He has had an incredible year for Tennessee. So many big hits. A walk-off homer against Vanderbilt that really sparked their season. Skeens 0-2. Yeah, Kirk and Merritt said recently, I'm, I'm 23 going on 40. <laughs> He's going to be a dentist. Yeah, he's already been admitted. Ohio State Dental School. Christian Moore said to us, yeah, he's going to be a dentist. He's going to live his life in clean teeth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they love him as a leader. One, two from Skeens is cut on and miss. 99 from Paul Skeens glancing back to check his velo with strikeout number 11. This guy is a flat-out superstar, and he's delivered on the big stage tonight in Omaha. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series, presented by Capital One. Well done. I was a little bit nervous there. I'm going to be honest with you. Berkey just walked back in yeah, right in the uh, middle after stepping out and had a right quizzical look. On his such face. a ball hog. Let the man do his job. Spread the wealth. Camden Sewell is on. Fifth year senior at six foot four, buck seventy five, has pitched a lot for the balls in his career. Preseason All American this year. A career 272 ERA. He enters for the bottom of the seventh. Another guy who, it's a similar story, KP. Another guy who was thinking about hanging him up and, and sometime in the summer rethought that decision, has come back and been fantastic out of this Tennessee bullpen again. A, a little bit of a throwback similar to Cannell where it's a sinker slider more works on deception and missing barrels than you'll see the electric velo like we see from so many guys out of the bullpen these days. It's coming on for the top of the LSU lineup. It's fourth time through beginning with Dylan Cruz the stud for LSU. Ground out, single, fly out to right for a likely top three pick. Yeah. Jams one yeah. into shallow right, and Scott hit a diving bid, but it drops down. And Cruz has a leadoff double. two-seamer that runs in on the hands of Cruz but right into no man's land Christian Scott gives everything he has to come up with that one Cruz puts the gas pedal down a a ball that tied him up turns into a leadoff double and here comes this Tiger offense again the on-base machine is aboard again for LSU now Tommy White 0 for 3, a couple of ground ball outs in this one. Upstairs to begin from Sewell. Tommy White's got it all working. Always. Chains and sleeve. 
hair. Oh yeah, he spent some time now. This this doesn't happen quickly, right? You got to tape it up. You got to change colors. The chain deal, I, I don't know. What do we get? About four of them. There's there's a there's a lot of swag going on there. Oven mitt. Two zero. Tommy Tanks lines one to left center and it drops down in front of Jared Dickey. Throw comes in and White will hold it first. A double and a single to begin for the Tigers in the seventh. So two on with no one out. And now to the three spot in the LSU lineup for Trey Morgan. And Frank Anderson, the pitching coach, will head on out there to the ball. What's he saying on his way out? I don't know. It, he was, whatever he was saying, he had a smile on his face. It had to be friendly, right? Seemed it. Didn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Looked like it was. Oh, hey, for more coverage of the NCAA Men's College World Series and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Sorry, man. Keep your head up, KP. We'll get back to you. Too odd for Trey Morgan. First pitch breaking ball. Jay Johnson was saying to us about Trey Morgan, preseason second team All American coming into this year. It's just phenomenal hand eye, the bat to ball skills. And he's really improved as a hitter when he stays in the zone. He said there's hardly any swing and miss on pitches in the zone. And we dug up the numbers. Overall, he makes contact 88% of the time on swings on pitches in the zone. He is rarely coming up empty. Listen, a lot of these guys like fashion. We talked about Tommy Tanks. How about the cleats that my man Trey Morgan's wearing? If you can see him, the say Nola on the side. They have some mass, very Mardi Gras-ish. Dylan Cruz very into the cleats. He's got 30 pairs of custom cleats. Oh, oh. Side two or two. <laughs> 30. 30. <laughs> College <laughs> baseball in 2023, <laughs> folks. We got a pair of black Mizunos. <laughs> And you, you got another one if the toe ripped out of it. Like if you had a pitching toe on it, the toe went out, then you could actually finally get another pair. Cruz's favorite pair are the ones that have a portrait of his dogs on them. We, we went on the white on whites. What would Coach Marquis have thought of those? Oh, there would have been a discussion. <laughs> Morgan lines it and drops it down foul. Dylan with a little, uh, what's the word, conservative with this shoe selection tonight. I was expecting maybe a little, a little louder choice. It was kind of just saving up. Yeah, just sharp and clean. But Trey Morgan filled in. Clean's a good word for the high top whites. Rhett Louder, the Wake Forest star ace, he's got good high tops working as well. That was a heck of a ball game earlier today. Wake and Stanford duking it out. Both pitching staffs. Pretty impressive with those two lineups. Morgan on a line to center. It sends Ensley back to make the catch. Cruz in the clean whites tags, and it's 5-0 on a set fly from Trey Morgan.
Now the cleanup man, Hayden Travinsky. Oh, that's outside. What do you guys make of how LSU factors into this 18 field? We know about schemes and a lineup that's top five in the country in runs per game. Wake's number one. You got Florida as the number two overall seed. How did the Tigers fit in? Uh, they're right there at the top of the conversation. I mean, the, the, the talent level is immense. And I, I think what I was looking forward to seeing from this lineup is, is the bottom half going to continue to perform the way we've seen from them in the postseason. And boy, have they checked that box here this evening. We know about the talent in the first four hitters. But the, the back half of this LSU lineup is, is just as dangerous right now. I mean, so many guys swinging it really, really well. It is. I mean, but the concern, and I think it's it's understood, is what happens after skins. Offensively, is has been incredibly consistent all year for LSU, but after Paul Skeens has not been incredibly consistent. Ty Floyd's had some really good ones. He's had some other ones that have just been okay. Thatcher Hurd's come on more towards the end of the year, but I think that's the only question. Right now. I mean, when you roll that cat out there, you're going to beat about anybody anytime. But it, it can't be just him here. Yeah. That math doesn't work. Yeah, I think the emergence of Gavin Guidry and the, the breaking ball that he's featured yeah. obviously has helped solidify things. We know about Riley Cooper, and the veteran left-hander, and his ability to extend games in the middle innings if need be. So there, there's enough. We've seen teams come here with four or five pitchers and win this thing. And, you know, Skeens kind of counts as two because he's, he's basically proven here down the stretch that he can pretty much take you the distance. Then you got all your arms available as you move forward after his starts. Two twos cut out and missed by Hayden Travinsky. Go, go. And Camden Sewell with a punch out go. for out number two. Winner plays on Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ESPN against Wake Forest. Loser plays in the afternoon on a Monday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, against Stanford. Play. Here's Cade Meloso, 0 for 3 so far. Ground out, strike out, fly out. Breaking ball to start. Still two plus innings to go in this as well. But if you're Tennessee and you start thinking ahead, if this outcome holds, you still got to like what you have left pitching wise with Chase Dolander, who went eight innings in the Super Regional and again is a top 10 caliber draft pick. If if this holds oh. of the teams that lost their opener, nobody is better set up to make a run back through it from a pitching standpoint than Tennessee. And that, that is where depth comes in more than anything in this tournament is when you lose a game and you got to fight all the way back. So what's crazy about Tennessee's pitching staff to highlight KP's point that they, they probably have three first rounders on their pitching staff whether this year or next and we haven't seen any of them tonight. So th that that's why he just said what he said of, of a team that's all four. Built. All four. That was ball four, so no snap throw necessary. Tommy White the second, and Cade Beloso's on with a walk, two aboard with two outs. A team that's built to be able to come back and win e even after dropping game one. They did it in the Super against Southern Miss, and just because this team drops the first game doesn't mean they can't hang around a while. However, if this does hold, they would get Quinn Matthews in an elimination game. So you got Dolander Matthews potentially and and uh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, you, you don't see that matchup too often yeah. fighting to save your season. I mean, think about what that would be like. This guy Chase Dolander came into the year with Paul Skeen's caliber expectations around him. Gavin Dugas strikes it well in the air to right center and Scott with room on the track to make the catch. Tigers out one. We go to the eighth. It's 5 nothing LSU. The NCAA Men's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallets?
11 strikeouts for Paul Skeen sitting on 199 of them this year. Going to be a lot in that wallet here in a few weeks, by the way. A whole lot in the Skeen's wallet. Three back just jumped David Price. And how about this, fellas? He's thrown seven innings tonight. On the season, he's thrown 114. Big Ben did 202 and 152, which is pretty oh. insane that Ben threw 152 innings. <laughs> but that just tells you how incredible the year that Paul Skeens has had. That strikeout per nine innings is insane. Ben DePolt now playing second for him. Blake Burke leads off 7-8-9. It's 2-0 and, oh and still carrying 100 on pitch number 104. Strikeout swinging on an elevated fastball on the fly out to left for Burke. KP, I'll go back to what you said to start the night. You said Paul Skeens could fly right now to Fenway Park, pitch tomorrow on Sunday Night Baseball. And nobody would blink at all. I, I line to center right at Dylan Cruz. What a way. I think what will get interesting for an organization is whether you shut him down this year which wouldn't shock me is if you take him shut him down this is the most innings he's ever thrown uh, and then get him ready for next year. he's going to be in big league spring training with whoever he's with and, and I think well, they're not going to be surprised because they see the stuff but I mean this guy rolling into big league spring training when nobody's seen him before he's going to turn heads with his first bullpen. I, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Somebody push him to the big leagues. I mean, maybe, maybe you do it a little bit this year, but I don't think you push him to the big leagues third week of July and have him finish the season out. I, I think the workload would concern me, but I'd have zero issue with starting him there next year. And just just 26 innings as a freshman, 85 last year. Now up to 114, 15, 16. However, this game unfolds. I think there would probably be a lot of wisdom in shutting him down and, and letting him build back up and, and getting ready for the major league hall of, of pitching every fifth day. But the other thing is if the Pirates stay in it and yeah. the Pirates take him first, Put him in the pen. it'd be hard not to think about putting him in the pen. 1-2 to Christian Scott is line towards center. Cruz on the run, can't get there. Plays it on a hop. Scott digs the throw. Does not get him. One out double for Christian Scott. And in the eighth inning, Tennessee for the first time has someone reach second base. Well, that's a couple back-to-back -back barrels, too. It's pretty incredible that it's taken eight innings to get to second. But this is a, a rocket off the bat of Burke. And now Scott with another barreled up ball into right center field. Cruz doing all he can do to try to keep Scott at first base. Scott decides to force the issue and wow what an aggressive slide in second base so hard that he ends up past the bag fortunately Thompson couldn't handle it Tennessee has a runner in scoring position and we go down to the ninth spot and the lineup with action in the pen the guys that Berkey mentioned Riley Cooper and Gavin Guidry and the pinch hitter for the catcher, Cal Stark, will be Dylan Dryling, the freshman from Kansas. He's got an OPS better than 1,000. And we'll get a trip to the mound here to come see Paul Skeens. It's Georgia's next to head coach. Oh, was that Jay Johnson? <laughs> That's Jay. I don't need all the Baton Rouge blowing me up right now. That's not George's <laughs> next head coach. When I looked up, I thought it was Wes Johnson. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was the. Uh, <laughs> That'd get him going. That was the <laughs> run out to uh, the mound, not the walk out that Wes usually does. Yeah, Jay's staying put, I think. Yeah. There's Wes. Who will That's be? That's George's next head coach. Yeah. The next head yes. coach in Athens. He's finishing out this ride with LSU. 110 pitches for Paul Skeens, the 11 punch outs, one out, one on. And this is Dryling taking the first pitch change up for strike one. Dylan Dryling, an immensely talented freshman bat. They've got very, very high hopes 
for this young man's future. Still figuring out how to play the outfield, and so they, they went with the veteran Christian Scott. He can swing the bat now, and you can see the respect they're paying him there. Change up, breaking ball to start this A-B to a freshman off the bench. Just lets you know how much they respect his ability to swing the bat. He's been really good as a pinch hitter this year. Tony Vitello told us today he started against Paul Skeens last time and actually drove a ball pretty well against Skeens. Yeah. Sees the high fastball called yeah, a strike. See a lot of these SEC hitters tonight surprised at the zone of Angel Campos. That's just not a call that they've seen much this year. I, I think they've been more surprised by in out uh, because there's been a little bit more out. Oh, yeah, you're right. Inside. That, that was close there too. We've seen the high breaking ball, a couple high heaters. That one right there, just right underneath the hands of of Dryling is a. Nasty pitch from Skeens. Let's see if he goes back to the changeup here after speeding him up with the heater in. 2-2. Two, two. Hey, hey. oh, strike three called at 100. 200 strikeouts this season for Paul Skeens and a dozen of them tonight. Just went back, grabbed a four-seamer, let it go. Still touching triple digits. So now that's yet another inning that Skeens has thrown 100. All eight innings, he's hit at least 100 miles an hour tonight. He's got two outs in this eighth back to the top for Maui Ahuna. It's 41 100 plus mile an hour pitches tonight of the 116. Well, we, we said his average fastball is a tick over 98, but that's for the whole season. The yeah. last three starts, it's 99.5. And that's certainly what we've seen here tonight. I mean, the average fastball is basically 100. That's all. Right. I mean, we've seen more hundreds than under 100 and he's gotten stronger as the years gone on that. And that's maybe the argument whoever takes him would be to use him this year in the big leagues because he, he's certainly not running out of gas. No, there's there's nothing that you've seen that would say, man, he's really getting tired. Yeah, he just hit 100 again, by the way. Right. Um, it's just more historical, right? I mean, he's he has never thrown this many innings. Um, but to your point, if you want to put him in a big league bullpen for the back half of the season, I think that, that would yeah. be understandable. And he's a horse, too. He's yeah. had 119 pitches. Remember, in the regionals, went 124. The one thing I wouldn't do is send him to the minor leagues this year. If you're not going to bring him to the big yeah. leagues, that's totally fine. I don't love it. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, that, that one's... That one's up and a touch out. And, and, and that's both directions. And Maui Huna didn't like that one. A, a fastball that's missed a couple ways. Josh Elaner is going to call time and make sure Maui Huna doesn't get a pitch clock violation. As if Paul Skeens needs any extra sizing on the zone. This place getting into it in the eighth inning. That's and an offensive. Mario Huna calls time himself. What you don't need is somebody getting thrown out. Because then it costs you the next one. Scott aboard, two out, Skeens deals. Fouled away on 101, and you had a feeling Skeens would be a little more charged up after all that. Well, that was the one Maui can, can do some damage on, too. That one was the one right around the knees. He just missed that one. On pitch number 122 from Paul Skeens. Fouled away again. 101 again. The, the average fastball Velo has to be in excess of 100 today. There's, yeah, there's has no to way be. the math has to be. The math can't work the other way. Ahuna making Skeens work. 3 2 on the ground in the center field of base hit. Scott races around and scores. 
And the balls are on the board in the eighth inning off Paul Skeens. And that is one heck of an A-B. Skeens unable to elevate the fastball three in a row down around the knees of Maui Ahuna. And he finally gets the barrel to one, a fastball middle of the plate just above the knees. And that one's going to chase Paul Skeens from the game as Jay Johnson's going to come take the ball from the right-hander. Maui Ahuna gets the balls on the board, but Paul Skeens gave the Tigers everything they could possibly want in this ball game tonight. Gavin Gidry will take over for Paul Skeens. A couple of years at the Air Force Academy, and Paul Skeens transferred in the offseason to Baton Rouge. And ever since this season started, he has been a capital S superstar. His journey has taken him here to Omaha, and on this stage, he was a star again tonight. Pretty good day at the office for Paul Skeens today. Now, we talked early just about how historic a season it's been for Skeens. Got to the 200 strikeout mark for the season tonight. Just keeps coming. Eighth inning up to 101. And a strikeout in every inning except two today for Skeens. 12 on the day and gives way. Not a lot of times she got rolling out of the bullpen. We're number one either. But because Gavin Gidry's done a little bit of everything for LSU, but this has been a, a bright spot for him down the road on the mound. A lot of times late inning reliever, you're going to see high velo, and you'll see some of that from Gidry. It'll get into the low 90s, but what you're going to see is a ton of sliders and a really good one. Not too many have handled it this year. And a ton of confidence from Gavin Gidry from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Paul Skeens was not too happy when he came off the mound. 123 pitches. He hit 146 times is the final tally for Paul Skeens. His final eight strikeouts all came on fastballs. And now if you're Hunter Inslee, you, you, you know the report. 67% breaking balls. Like you you got to go up there with that in the front of your mind. First pitch swinging there, Ensley to deep center, and Cruz is back, and that ball is off the top of the wall, and gone! Skeens out, Ensley strikes. Hey now. Looks like he did have the scouting report, boys. The center fielder from Huntington, Tennessee, gets a hanging breaking ball sitting in the middle of the plate, and he launches it just over top of that center field wall, one hop into the seats. And just like that, we got a two-run ball game. Things are getting interesting here late. First pitch after the departure of Paul Skeens. How do you do, Hunter Ensley? What a night. Three knocks and a two-run homer. We told you that Jared Dickey predicted this coming from his teammate, Hunter Ensley. Three hits now for Ensley in this game, including the two-run shot. Riley Cooper next. It's a two-run ball game. Drama in Omaha on day two at the Men's College World Series. Three runs in this continuing top of the eighth for Tennessee in this matchup with LSU. Gavin Gidry threw one pitch. It was launched by Hunter Ensley, the pride of Huntington, Tennessee, and now gives way to Riley Cooper, the lefty. Pride of Fresno, California. Let's keep it going right now. The left-hander that in a starting role early now has filled a few roles as the year has gone on but yeah yes he went and to at least face Dickey from the left side then we'll see after that and Jared Dickey went around according to home plate umpire Angel Campos 
Bouncing ball chopped up the middle. Jordan Thompson had to wait on it. He gets rid of it and got him. Dickey wants a review at first. This ball almost squirts out of the top of Thompson's glove. So because of that, he has to take a little extra shuffle. And ooh, I don't know, boys. Gets to the top of the bag, cost himself. Oh, he's safe. safe. Hey, yeah. no doubt he's safe. This one will be quick. Jared Dickey legging out a chopper up the middle, and Tennessee bringing the tying run to the plate is perfect for what the first three games of this College World Series have been like. Late offense, comebacks, yeah. and tight ball games. Yeah, you haven't really wanted to lead in the first <laughs> three, but it looks cool, and then look up at the end, it's been different. Watch this, this, yeah, this little, little extra little. shuffle. If you're new to college baseball, coaches get two challenges per game. You retain them if you're successful. So as we think, Tony Vitale, Vitale will be successful. He would retain this if overturned. Yeah, I'm not sure this one, why it's taken this long. This was a no-doubter from the first look. The call of the field will be overturned to safe. Tennessee will retain their challenge. Balls are fired up, and as Berkey said, they got the tying run to the plate here all of a sudden with some juice in the eighth inning. And they got their team leader in OPS climbing in. This would be the guy, Moore or Denton. If you could pick one of the two in this Tennessee lineup for a spot like this. Christian Moore takes a breaking ball for a land strike at the bottom of the zone. Moore 0 for 3 against Paul Skeens. Couple of backwards K's, odd heaters, and a line out to left. Count on and missed. Nothing in two. Yeah. First seven innings, Tennessee had three hits without a run. This inning, four hits and three runs on the board. Two outs, man at first. Cooper's 0-2. Check swing, did not go. You got to give Maui Ahuna a ton of credit, right? He's the reason yeah. this inning's still alive. Oh. A, a, a bat that just, he wouldn't go away. Nice job by Moore putting the brakes on. He wouldn't go away and let Skeens walk off the field. One, two. In the air, and that will fade off foul toward the seats. You think about it, going into that at bat, Maui Ahuna had six at bats off Paul Skeens, had five strikeouts. He got behind in the count and just hung around. Finally got one, he could put the barrel on up the middle, and now Tennessee's got the tie and run to the plate just like that. It was only Ahuna's second hit all year against 95-plus miles an hour. And it has helped bring the balls back. 1-2. A strike three calls. But the balls are hanging around, folks. Hunter Ensley making this one real interesting late. Hang around with us. It's going to be a special finish. Tennessee with three runs in the top of the eighth inning. Brought the tying run to the play with their cleanup man, Christian Moore, and he struck out looking on this. What you got, KP? Uh, I've got it's consistent with what we've seen tonight. That's what I've got. I mean, it's, it's pretty darn close, boys. I mean, up, down, maybe it's half a ball off, but that's been called a strike tonight. It's been consistently called a strike tonight. Yeah. And I know that within the SEC this year, that zone's been a little bit smaller. But if that comes out of nowhere and he gives three or four inches, that's one thing. But it really hasn't. I think he's called a strike most of the night. Well, Tennessee frustrated by that. 
We go now to the home half of the eighth inning and the six foot eight right hander Hollis Fanning comes on for the balls. An interesting story for Tennessee this year. Look at that ERA. Now, not a huge sample size, but he has been dominant in his appearance for Tennessee. And even though it's a big young arm, he's a strike thrower. Just three walks on the season. He's coming on to face the bottom third of the Tigers lineup that Berkey was talking about earlier that has provided depth in addition to the star power at the top here in this one. No one more so than this guy, Braden Jobert. Got a new catcher as well. That's Charlie Taylor into the game for Cal Stark. Jobert, the RBI triple his last time. Ooh. Nothing in two. All right, let me get you this. That did not get Charlie Taylor. See the numbers for Joe Bear. Jay Johnson said to us this morning he's playing the best baseball of his career right now. So when he goes, we are really hard to beat. Well, he's been going in this one. That's down one and two. He's had stretches of his career where he can literally carry them. He pointed back to a Vanderbilt series last year where he just was red hot, and you've seen that tonight. Like he, the, the the talent is immense. And he pulls Run, this please, one let's go. to right. See it. He's hot. after that young man. What a show by Braden Jobert. And what a big insurance run for this Tiger team is Jay Jobert trying to steal a little of the shine from Paul Skeens in this one with the performance he's putting on. He's a single shy of the cycle. He's gone double, triple homer his last three trips. That's called getting hot. It's a bit warm right now. Yeah. <laughs> Toasty for the Louisiana native in his second year with the Fighting Tigers. Now at his third school. Started his career at Nichols State in 2020. The next year went to JUCO in New Orleans. Was a JUCO All-American. Last year, 18 home runs for LSU. Outside to Jordan Thompson, two and one. He's hitting seventh in this lineup, and his OPS tomorrow when he wakes up is going to be over a thousand. With 12 home runs, that, that that's your seven hole hit. Two one. Other ground left side at Ahuda. One away. Back to the home run from Braden Jobert. Like a hanging slider, KP. Yeah, a slider just pulls back across the plate. And man, that is one of the prettiest finishes you will see. That classic left handed high finish on a ball that he just blasts a majestic shot over the right field wall. Braden Jobert carrying this Tiger offense tonight. To the nine spot, Josh Pearson. 694 yeah. for strike one. Pearson singled in the third of the pull side has since gone strikeout and ground down to first. Fanning's 0-1, down and away. Hit hard to first and Buck stabs and slides. Two down. Sunday, the Yankees are at Fenway for this weekend series finale. The Red Sox took game one yesterday, 15 to 5. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdowns at 6. Then it's Yankees, Red Sox at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Hope oh, Ravi and Eduardo had smooth sailing the rest of the way. 
Two outs here, bottom of the eighth, and Tony Vitello is out to make a move. Another one for the Vols, and A.J. Russell, the talented freshman, comes on for Tennessee when we come back to the Men's College World Series. Peyton Manning and his son with the rally caps on at this time of the night here in Omaha in the bottom of the eighth inning. With the balls down three to the Tigers. Bracket looks like this. Again, eight teams, a couple brackets of four. It's double elimination. And then a week from today, best of three final with the bracket winners. Three one-run games, and we'll see how this one ends. But, yeah, this is uh, a good first two days hanging out with the Jets. A.J. Russell could be the next one. Already looks like the next one. Those numbers are accurate. We didn't type those in wrong. He's given up nine hits in 28 and two-thirds. And punched out 46. He, he has a 43% whiff rate on his fastball. Average is 18. Mm. Well, we're going to find out how good that heater is right here. Against Dylan Cruz. Single and a oh, double. That's, outside. that's 95. Away. Yeah, it's nine hits in 90 at bats against A.J. Russell. He's 1 1 to Cruz. In the air, left center. Ensley coasts over. And the inning is over. That one carried a long way. LSU with Braden Joe Bear. Another one to the ninth. Paul Skeens likes it. Last licks for Tennessee. In the last 41 Men's College World Series, only four teams have lost their first game and gone on to win the national championship. And yeah, it's helpful, too, if you can start 2-0. Winner of this one plays Monday night against Wake Forest. The loser plays Monday afternoon against Stanford, who's likely going to throw their senior star, Quinn Matthews. Riley Cooper back to work for LSU. He's got a new right fielder behind him at Paxton Kling. And it's three outs to play with for the Vols, with five, six, and seven, starting with Zane Denton. Cuts through that, and he's down nothing in two. It's go time for Tennessee. And then slows the roll of uh, Riley Cooper. We saw that ball that Dylan Cruz just hit blow an extra 20 or 30 feet deep into the center field gap. This, if you're a Tennessee offense, you got a, a left-hander that's a much different look than Paul Skeens. You got the wind blowing out. The conditions are certainly ripe for a rally. One, two. Cut on and missed. 93 up the shoot from Cooper. One away in the ninth. It may not be 100, but Riley Cooper knows how to pitch. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just well executed. Plus count, elevate the fastball. The thing holds playing in on the hands of Zane Denton right there. That's a big first out because this part of the Tennessee lineup, Denton, Merritt, Burke, can all hit it in the seats and change it really quick. So now it's Griffin Merritt. Breaking ball on the edge that Merritt doesn't like. It's strike one. The 0-1. This is pulled. Left field and Josh Pearson is there for out number two. Paul Skeen struck out a dozen before he left in the eighth inning. This LSU program, the six-time national champions, back here at the College World Series for the first time since 2017 and try to start with a win. Blake Burke the batter, and he takes ball one. one 0 pitch it is a strike, was Burke now ready? Would appear to be taking there. <laughs> he had one hand on the bat. That usually, I mean, I think he's talking about getting quick uh -huh. pitch, but. 1-1. One, one. And Burke chops it up the middle. Tops in. Went for the short hop. And Tennessee's got a man on with two outs here in the ninth inning. It's certain he needed to charge this one this hard, you know, or even harder and make that a shorter hop, right? It was like 
You're either going to play that back because the first baseman Burke doesn't run great, or you're going to come and try to catch that thing in the air. What's the call here? Well, Blake Burke is moving up, clearly. It's a second base. Not sure what we missed there. Hmm. Well, Christian Scott oh. takes ball one. So, man in scoring position with two outs. And Scott the batter. Some sort of obstruction. In the air, left side, and Pearson toward the railing. Runs out of room. No, I don't, I don't think that was it. The, the, the ball was caught at first base by Trey Morgan. He went to flip it back to, to Riley Cooper. I was watching the replay, and next thing you know, Blake Burks trotting to second base. Well, it's a ball and a strike for Riley Cooper. Uh, Christian Scott and the pitch. Ball. This is outside. Two one. That's up high and it's three and one with the would-be tying run in the on-deck circle for Tennessee. That's Charlie Taylor, the backup catcher. Cooper deals and comes home with a strike, and it's 3-2. and two. Line back to Cooper. He's got it, and it's over. LSU wins against Tennessee. Well, 1-1 one, one run, but it was a heck of a college baseball game. Paul Skeens, hard to outdo the hype. But I, I would say that he did. He was that electric tonight. And the LSU offense just continues to be a problem that nobody really has the answers for. No, they're just a different team when he's out there. I mean, I think anybody would be a different team when they were out there. But I, I, this offense was so good against some really good Tennessee arms tonight. I mean, they, they were running some guys out there that have a chance to pitch for a while in this game. And yet the ball just kept, kept coming off the bat with authority for LSU. They're, they're dangerous. I mean, we knew they were dangerous. They're dangerous right now, and now they get wake in two, two nights, I guess, which should be an awesome matchup.